Welcome to A Guide to Every Deck in Legacy. Today we're looking at Burn. Burn is an aggro deck and boasts the honor of being the cheapest deck in Legacy by far since it's monocolored and plays no dual lands, no fetches, and no reserve list cards. It's easily the best way to get into Legacy if you're on a budget and is even cheaper than the modern version of Burn. Burn uses cheap creatures with haste and direct damage spells to aggressively pressure the opponent and can win as early as turn 3. One of the things that makes Burn such a powerful deck is, as opposed to other aggro decks, that it attacks from multiple angles. Even if you deal with its creatures, it can still burn you out with spells. A common play pattern is that the Burn player will get their opponent to a low life total, like 6, before they stabilize, and then only has to draw 2 spells to finish them. One way to think of Burn is as a combo deck that needs to draw 6 or 7 non-land cards and it doesn't care which one, meaning it has inevitability. Many of its direct damage spells also target creatures, and so it can disrupt other creature decks like Delver and D&T. Additionally, Eidolon of the Great Revel is sometimes a you-win-the-game button. It's a brutal card that can single-handedly steal games, especially against decks that seek to play many cheap spells such as 8-cast or Ant. Even in the worst-case scenario that it gets killed immediately, it'll still probably deal 2 damage and cost the opponent a card. The various direct damage spells in the deck are essentially interchangeable as long as they deal at least 3 damage, but Price of Progress is particularly noteworthy for being a 1 card blowout, especially against decks with a high volume of non-basic lands such as lands, delver, and so on. It's also one of the reasons Burn plays so few basics itself, since although Burn is an aggro deck, that doesn't always mean it can afford to hurt itself depending on the matchup. Finally, sacrificing 2 lands for Fire Blast is quite the cost, and so it should only be used to push the last bit of damage over the edge. Burn is a fairly newbie-friendly deck. While there are some choices to make, they're mostly just knowing when to point a burn spell at a creature or the opponent's face, and even inexperienced players can fumble their way to victory. Sideboarding and Weaknesses One of the best aspects of Burn's card choices are their ability to not lose tempo. Most sideboard hate cards slow down the opposition but don't actually advance your own game plan. Cards like Rest in Peace and Null Rod severely hamstring certain decks, but they don't apply any pressure and the opponent can therefore eventually find answers to them. In Burn's case, some of its cards can perform their intended function while still dealing damage. For example, Searing Blood and Smash to Smithereens simultaneously act as disruption and direct damage, meaning you don't even lose tempo by playing them. Roiling Vortex hits decks looking to play free spells such as 8-cast or Aluren and can shut off life gain. Some other potential options are Ensnaring Bridge for Creature Decks, Blood Moon, Graveyard Hate, and of course Pyroblast. Cards to take out are potentially some number of the least efficient burn spells, Creatures if the opponent is well suited to beating them, and Eidolon if it would prove detrimental against other aggro decks. The decks most suited to face burn are those that can either race it, like combo decks, or that have a combination of cheap answers to its threats and which can present a clock, or which have the ability to gain life such as by playing Uro. Any deck with Stoneforge can potentially gain life by tutoring for Batterskull or Umazawa's Jite. It's important to have removal for Stoneforge or side-in Smash to Smithereens. Cheap counterspells are ubiquitous in Legacy, and so many decks have the ability to fight Burn's direct damage spells, especially if they play cards like Flusterstorm or Spell Pierce. Chalice of the Void is uniquely problematic for Burn to deal with, and it must bring in Smash to Smithereens for it. The deck's weakest play pattern is running out of gas as the game progresses. Some cards like Light Up the Stage are possible inclusions, but have generally been found to be ineffective. Wheel of Misfortune is a possible addition to the deck since you can choose a number that forces the opponent either to let you wheel or take a ton of damage. Tips and Tricks There will be times when you're on the back foot in a damage race. If your life total is low, make sure not to lock yourself out with your own Eidolons. Remember that Eidolon is an enchantment and can thus be killed by things that kill them, like Vaseju. When casting Chain Lightning, while it's unlikely that your opponent will have two open red mana, you still need to keep that in mind. Opponents can waste land their own lands to save 4 life from Price of Progress. This is still probably good for the burn player, but it is partially an out. When attacking with Goblin Guide, note that there's a lot more instant speed top deck manipulation in Legacy than other formats due to Brainstorm, and opponents can brainstorm a land to the top in response. When playing against Burn, note that using Swords to Plowshares or Solitude on your own creatures is a viable tactic to making a comeback. I hope you've enjoyed this look at Burn. I want to thank my fellow players in the Magic community for whom sharing their experiences helps make these guides possible. You can find additional resources, such as an up-to-date deck list, in the description. If you think I left out anything important or got something wrong, please leave your thoughts in the comments. And stay tuned to see what deck we look at next time.